Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Ben Gagbola. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Lola Wave. But that is not a big deal here today. I'm here um, before royalty. I have Mr. Faladiola, the founder and former CEO of uh, GT Bank, um, the global Pan-African Nigerian bank. Um, glad to have you here, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Benga. Okay, so uh, I'm lucky to be here today. Um, for context, I used to work in GT Bank a long time ago. Um, and I'm very happy to be here with the name I see on so many memos back then. Um, we built pretty much um, the structure and the foundation of, of the bank, um, Mr. Fawadiola. Um, so I'm very happy to have you here, sir. I have a bunch of questions, um, but let me just start by what was even the book that made you start the bank? Why? What happened? Um, because if, if I look back from what I, I read on Google, I'm that young, sir. <laughs> um, you, you see that there are so many big banks before GT Bank started, right? And the banking landscape felt very, very crowded. But what made you still decide to create a new bank, you know, that has that, that blazed the trail of the Nigerian banking today? Okay. Um, life presents itself in various forms and um, until some of them converge, those different forms, uh, things don't just happen. Let me give you an example. My training was that of a chartered accountant and then I veered into banking. And what was important to me at that time was to be a sound banker. And I regard that as my preparation stage. Then there came another stage along the line of my preparation stage where the federal government of Nigeria decided that they were going to liberalize um, banking licenses, or the economy generally, and banking licenses uh, form part of that liberalization. With good preparation, right, an opportunity created itself, okay, and you just said to yourself, hmm, the first person came to you, a business person, come and run my bank for me, and you felt, oh my goodness, I'm not ready to run a bank. And the next person came, and you then asked yourself at some point, what gave them the boldness to want to get banking licenses, right? And then put you to come and effect their desire or stops you from asking for a banking licenses with all the preparation you've gone through and see whether as an insider you can situate in the space a proper bank, a, a professional's bank, right, where those who ply that trade will have fulfillment, the customers will have a taste of what banking truly is, ought to be, and all these purposes can be achieved because you can influence the organization as opposed to working in systems where there are other interests that might prevail and prevent you from influencing it. So in a nutshell, that was what happened. And we then I said to myself, okay, this bank that I see, um, what if something happened to me in the course of starting it or doing it? Of course the dream would die. But it takes a long time for people uh, to imbibe and assimilate other people's um, ideas or dreams. And that was when I reached out to my friend and partner, may he so rest in peace, to say, come, this is what I am thinking about. Um, I'd like you to come with me. Uh, on his own, he can run a bank. On my own, I could run a bank. Uh, but the fear of um, stalting the progression was removed by Tayo coming with me. 
And for him also, by me being there, if he had wanted to run his own bank. Um, so that was how the journey, the journey started. Wow, <laughs> that's really amazing. <laughs> Okay, so my next question will be, from what you just said, you mentioned how you were an accountant mm -hmm. and how the stage and the opportunity came to be to allow you to build that, um, make that step to start um, GT Bank with your, with your partner. My next question will be, um, so what, what, what did you see that made that partnership to work? What did you see? Because for small, for small, People like us, founders like us, right? We, I mean, I was the part of Y Combinator, and they would tell us to make sure we forget the co founder, right? It was a requirement to be in Y Combinator because they believe mm. that, I mean, if you want to go fast, you know, you go uh, alone, Hello. if you want to go farther, you, you go with people. But what made you, what, what, what made the partnership thrive? What were the values that it was built on that we can learn from? It is the overriding objective. Um, what was more important was to see the dream become reality. Um, it wasn't a marriage and it wasn't, um, it was just what could happen and the, the, the desire to see happen what you yearn to happen um, killed all the minor uh, irritants, uh, things that get two people to say, no, I can't take this or I can't take that. The question that drove me through was, what is in the best interest of Guarantee Trust Bank? And then um, you, you, you keep subsuming yourself for the larger interest. The moment, the moment you raise yourself above the larger interest, Anything can go wrong, and anything will go wrong. Um, but once you are focused on that larger interest, things will work. Um, the good thing that we had was we've been friends since high school, okay? And therefore, we weren't trying to learn about one another. Um, our, our families, our children, um, at some point, believed that they were related. They were not. Um, so, that happened. And all through the process, yeah, there are good times when everything worked well. And there were bad times when I didn't like what this person did or this person didn't like uh, what I did. But then you say to yourself, you know, it's like you had a compass. Where's your true north, right? And every time you veered from the true north, your attempt is not to stay veered. Right, your effort is to say, let me get back to the true north. True north for us was um, an unusual and uncommon organization, an, an uncommon Nigerian organization. You understand? And for as long as we were on that track, up till today, for as long as that's the track, uh, every other thing is absorbable. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, what are you most proud of in Ghana Trust Bank? Right. What could you say was a very big um, achievement that has spawned the good of the bank right now? You know, it's not it's not common for every sixty six year old person to sit down away from an institution that continues to run, that continues to do well that continues to excel and people are not bringing paper to you every second what do we do here what do we do there how do we solve this in 2020 this year on the 31st of july i will have left guaranteed trust bank for 18 years wow okay and um i don't get um bits and pieces i don't sit on their board um, different people run the organization have been succeeded by two people uh, so far so good uh, it, it, you have to be clear in your life what you want like I said for me it's constantly the interest of guarantee trust bank 
and um, if I stand in their way or think that I must be the only person who can continue to do things, then it's not going to grow. Yes, there are, there are, you know, it's vanilla or strawberry or chocolate, but they're all ice cream. Um, can Shegun Abaji run a bank? That's not a question for today. Shegun Abaji has been in charge of a bank for 10 years, right? The bank is running, the bank is growing, the bank is doing well. People have come in, they've left, they've complained some, some they've clapped, but it's irrelevant. When we look at everything at the end of the day, Guaranteed Trust Bank has not shrunk. Um, um, and that is my joy, that in my lifetime, right, um, an organization that I bathed uh, with my friend um, can continue irrespective of what happens to us. Uh, that is what I'm most proud of. The second thing is that um, when you look at the space today, those who are doing interesting things in this space um, came out of this establishment. Whether the name of the bank is Access, for as long as they're doing things that are uh, positive or are influencing the space, so there's a lot of pride in seeing young men and young women. Um, I was told that Ibenga was going to be talking to me today. I never knew he passed through Guarantee Trust Bank. Um, and I said to myself, oh, no wonder is the one that he found to be, to be talking to me. Um, the training is unparalleled. Um, we, we, we've never saved cost on training. And whether they stay or they go, they are not lost to Nigeria. If they are, they are not lost to humanity. And um, those things give me joy. Guy taps you at the airport. Um, you don't know me, sir. My name is so so and so. I was in Guarantee Trust Bank. Um, I have been out of Guarantee Trust Bank for longer than I was in Guarantee Trust Bank. And it, it continues. It continues. That was the dream. Can't we make it happen? You know, you go to England, you see companies since 1503, since 1774, since so, so, so. Yeah, we can say today, okay, it's short, Guarantee Trust Bank since 1990. Okay, and I hope that one day that 1990 will sound in the ears of people like 1550. You know, they say that the best time to plant a tree was a hundred years ago, yeah. right? The next best time is, is right now. Now. <laughs> now. So we didn't do it in 1503. We couldn't, we were not alive. But we did it in 1990. And um, the tree is still growing. That's all, that's all. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> I, I love the Access Bank beat. And that will influence my next question, which is, um, GT Bank grew organically, mm -hmm. right? Um, some other bank did went by M&A, yeah. managers, and stuff. Mm -hmm. What informed the business model? Why that? I remember when I was there, there was talk around acquiring Inland Bank, mm -hmm. but it never happened. Mm -hmm. And the bank decided to just expand by itself. Mm -hmm. um, so what informed that model? Why that direction? In the space that we have today, answer. Did you know it was successful as well? Did, did I know that model was successful? Oh, it wasn't even like a model existed. Okay. okay, and like you said, we tested growing by combination, right? It was in a strategy room that conclusions were reached. That you know what. We are better going in this direction. There, there was don't don't be fooled that there was pre knowledge as to how something must happen. Um, the best of us will only navigate, right? And like I said, we didn't have a map. All we had was a compass, right? And um, with that compass, 
we were writing our map on, on the piece of paper. So it wasn't like we said never over a dead body. That will never be a combination. No. Not, not, at least not when I was there. But when the opportunities of combination uh, 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 arrived, um, we examined it. And the decision was that, you know what? We are better without it than with it. It is possible that if it had been if we had been better with it than without it, a combination would have occurred. But that wasn't what we felt. And those who succeeded me, when those opportunities came before them, they also did the same analysis and they felt, you know what, let's carry on. Let's carry on. And you'll find that in this space today, there are only two banks left that never combined. Zenith Bank and Guarantee Trust Bank. So, what we do as strategists is to then say to ourselves, those who combine, what results have they shown over time? Those who didn't combine, what results have they shown over time? Um, the most important thing is that you must know yourselves, right? And, and do things that suit who you are and your abilities. And I find that... Um, both Zenith and Guarantee Trust Bank, even though the conversation is on Guarantee Trust Bank, have, have done, have taken decisions that best suit them and who they are. And that has reflected significantly in the uh, superior results that they have consistently, not superior results for one year, that they have consistently uh, um, uh, uh, brought into the, into the space. Wow. I like that no map, just compass. Interesting. Um, I'm going to move on to a bunch of things you've done after you left the bank. Okay. For example, um, today in Africa, one of the biggest internet businesses is Me One. Okay. And I saw that you're also on the board. <laughs> yes. And I've seen the trail that Ms. Bukweke has blazed, uh, she's blazed as well. What influenced you backing them? and being a supporter of that company. It's also been a very interesting, from there, like the GT back of tech, right? What, and it seems to be like a pattern for you, sir. <laughs> what was the, what was behind that? What was the backstory? Anytime you are onto something good, anytime you are onto something good, you can only attract good people. Hmm. Bad people don't come into something good. Good people don't go into something bad. And therefore, um, at some point in my life, I met Funke Opeke, and I caused her to alter employment. Not career, but employment. Okay, she was an MTN. Highly, highly paid. And I um, got her to go and do something else. In the course of doing that something else, I had to exit that something else that she was doing, all right? And therefore, I lost completely all influence, right, over what could happen to her. Um, and we hadn't, we hadn't traveled far on that journey. Uh, and I said to myself, wow, I've just caused somebody um, to give up her excellent job to go into something different. So I called her and I said to her, you know what, this has happened, I've got to leave. But do you have any idea, any silly idea that you want to pursue and you think I'll be useful to you? Would you let me know? And she said, I'll let you know. Um, you know, when I make those statements to people, for me, it represents a commitment, mm -hmm. right? It's an IOU, and it's something that at any time, when they bring it to me, um, I don't write it, I just say it. When they bring it to me, I feel a sense of honor your commitment. Uh, and I didn't find from care again. I had gone on another trajectory. One day I got a call. I'd like to come and see you. 
And I said, come. And she came. And she said, do you recall that you said this to me when you were leaving this organization? I said, yes. He said, I have a silly idea. And I said, what is it? And she said, I want to sink a cable subsea from Europe to Lagos. I said, that's your idea? I said, yes. What will it cost? $240 million. <laughs> and I said, okay. So how do you think I can help you? I said, you can. We're putting, I'm writing the proposal, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can help me raise money. You can help me do this. You can help me do that. And I said, okay. I made the commitment. <laughs> let's, 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 let's start. And that, that was how the journey of me won. Um, started and I found myself writing letters under my hand, on my letterhead to people. Um, things were so bad at that time, 2007, 2008, uh, uh, financial crisis, economic depression, um, that the only structure that would work for us was 50 equity, 50 debt. You know, normally you will have less of equity, more of debt. We had to take equity to 50. In other words, we were looking for $120 million of equity. Uh, in this space and the wider space of Africa, um, we raised it. And we raised the debt of 120 million naira. Now, Funke Opeke is an extraordinary person. Um, we completed this project on time, on budget, right? the right quality. Um, it's, 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 it's just amazing. Um, that, that, that's a bit of the journey. Uh, that's what brought Funke and I. That's not what brought us together. That's what kept us uh, together. She has remained faithful uh, on that journey up, up, up to now. And um, I don't just sit on the board. I've, I've been chair of the board since uh, um, the company started and we landed this is what governments used to do you know when we were young to 40 million telecom project we landed the first cable here okay some other people said they landed the first cable but it's okay and um, we carried the bulk of the data out of this country and um, a lot more cables have since entered our waters and landed on our shores, but meanwhile remains the um, the flagship, you know, the industry standard in terms of its quality, in terms of its resilience. And in the time we became active, I think in 2009, and apart from one incident, uh, where the cable cut mid ocean once, uh, which took us like 10 days to put back. We've been up 24 hours of the day, seven days of the week, right? 365 or 66 days of the year. Um, powered by Funke, I mean, uh, in, in, in other climbs, they should just. Um, find out a DNA and they <laughs> bottle it and try and inject so many people. She's a, she's a national asset. Wow. Amazing. Just for record, we also use me one for our infrastructure. Everybody uses me <laughs> so, Don't yeah. you bank, we guarantee trust bank. Well, <laughs> obviously. Um, how did you manage regulations, right? Ah. Uh, that is one area I want to add. How did you manage more than also um, how did you build that GDBank culture? You know, today in the industry, the culture of GT Bank has been you know, it's an exciting place to work. You can work there and not you will you, you, you will, there will be a mark left on you one way or four. So regulation and culture, how did you do that? Okay, let me start with culture which was easier. On day one 84 people, right, 
And even before we opened our doors at all, we put ourselves in a classroom for three months, four months, just asking ourselves how we want to live. And in that room, everybody was equal, including what we call ourselves. Do we want to call ourselves Mr. Diola or Miss Johnson? Or do we want to call ourselves Fola and Tommy? Or do we want to call, what do we want to call ourselves? And we resolve that we'll call ourselves by our first names. Okay, fine. Um, so we will. Uh, because once we reach an agreement, agreements are important. What, what creates conflict in business, among people, between friends, uh, amongst friends, is typically people not reaching agreements. Okay? Uh, when I say they don't reach agreement, it's not like they don't talk or they don't try. But sometimes, because the language you use to communicate may not be received well by the other person, understandings vary, understandings differ. And therefore, you need to ask yourself, what do you understand by what I just said, yeah. right? Um, and, ah, no, 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 that's not what I meant, right? Even if the English is bad, say it until the person says back to you what you th meant, and you can say, yes, that's what I meant. And that person can say it in his own words. Once we reach agreements, um, uh, fights reduce, okay? So if we agree that we're going to be calling ourselves first names, I will come out and say you may, something like, you will call me Fola, say yes. And I will call you Benga, you will say yes. Then if you see me tomorrow and you call me Fola, I can't say you are rude to me. We have agreed that that is what we will do. But I could say, oh, okay, when we read that, when we say we we'll call ourselves first names, uh, you didn't say it included, uh, I didn't say it included me. Yeah. Ah. So maybe we need to ask whether it includes you or not. <laughs> Until we reach agreement, it's 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 not um it's not a joke. If we do that and we we evolve the culture and guarantee trust band through agreements, through agreements. Not that we were signing contracts. No, we are putting ourselves in a room, discussing what the issue was, and asking ourselves what are we taking out of this room. That's all. And each time we said that's what we were taking out of the room. For example, we had a, a space for dining and it could only take eight people. Yeah. And we reached an agreement that it doesn't mean that the senior people must eat before the junior people, right? It's eight people, okay? Any eight people filling that room, the room was full. So if I popped in, and I found that there were eight. I couldn't find a seat. I had a choice. I could eat standing, right? And nobody is going to get up for me. Not that they don't want to get up for me, but that's not the agreement. The agreement was that they have taken the seat, and I could also come back. So we could start serving lunch at noon, right, till two o'clock. Eventually, in in eight. Right, it goes, it's it goes, everywhere. it goes round everybody. So that's how, and we were faithful to the culture. For example, um, in the early one day, I got to the office and I found in front of the plaza we had eight parkings, right? And I found MD, DMD. Okay, so there were six left. So we called a meeting. And this is what I just saw. Where will our customers park? <laughs> and they said, um, well, there are six uh, parkings left. But we're not looking for six customers. <laughs> the eight parkings that we had were not sufficient for our customers. But the MD has taken one. The DMD has taken one. I mean, is this, is this the, we, we used to ask the question, is this the vision? And mm. I said, so what do you want us to do? Because somebody wanted to resolve that. So, but the, M the managing director has a driver. The deputy managing director has a driver. Yeah. Our lives are even easier than the lives of our staff who don't have drivers. And they found parking. And oh, no, let the drivers go and look for where to dump the car and leave all the space for the customers. At least let the customer know that if he's not able to park, 
right? It's not because the managing director has taken the space, has taken the space <laughs> that he, all customers are equal. The first eight or the eight that we find parking, we we'll finish it. And if we finish with them sooner or in a, within a short, a, a, a very short period, then the turnover of the of the parking. So those are the ways we 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 we, we build culture. Okay. Um, on the regulator, my experience is one for the institution to understand the regulation, right, and structure itself to implement the regulation, right. Whether it is good or it is bad, while that is the regulation, if it is bad, to begin a process of advocacy, mm. trying to show the regulator that you know what, can I know what you want to achieve, right, by this regulation? If I know what you want to achieve by this regulation, it's possible that I will think and show you ways that the industry can be structured so that you achieve that which you want to achieve by the regulation, all right? And hopefully the regulator may see it. It's not all the time that they, they, they see it. My experience, though, is that in, in, in our own space, regulators stifle um, uh, the business. I was lucky throughout my stay. Um, the governor of Central Bank, the governor of Central Bank that regulated the space when I was running the bank the longest was a gentleman called Joseph Sanusi, still alive. And he had a habit. Um, I also worked in the industry when Paul Oguma was governor of Central Bank. And they had this practice. Before they brought out the regulation, they would call the practitioner and discuss and engage and fine tune and so on and so forth. Um, different uh, times change and 10 kings, 10 reigns. Uh, so, our own way of facing it at Guarantee Trust Bank was to make sure that we understood the regulation, we structured ourselves to comply to the extent that we felt it could be better. We engaged the regulator. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't work. But the regulator is the regulator. Now, the purpose of regulation is... is Regulation is critical in an industry. Otherwise, we, we will do we, people will do wrong things. So uh, we still we need regulators, but we need regulators who enable the business along certain parameters. Those parameters are informed by the current the current interest of the country, the current interest of the industry, and so on and so forth. Any regulation that is just to show power or the fact that we can do it. It's in vain, right? And I believe that um, that is the engagement we need to have as practitioners with the regulators. Let us know what is in their mind, that which they believe is in the interest of the country, that this regulation will uh, uh, steer us towards. And let us work with them to find ways of getting to that same point in a manner that keeps the business to survive. If there are no businesses, there's nothing to regulate. So the regulator must not want to kill the businesses, right? But to grow them so that they will have things, I mean, a, 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 an industry to regulate. But I think it's, um, it's working together uh, most of the time that will get you, because it's common interest really. You also don't want to kill the regulator uh, because it's essential. Otherwise, the wrong, the wrong competitor will kill you. You know, Your, the regulator is who we all go, we all end up with. One question that I see online, I would like to ask you, sir, is the question regarding how, you know, if you go to the U.S., people like you in the U.S. Um, where, where the industry experts and you. You've been there. Most people like you have built venture capital companies, right? Where you're backing young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. You just describe you, you backed 
meal one, which is amazing. Like we've seen the, the growth of meal one as mm. a viable business. Mm. How is that something that you are, you are doing, sir, that we're not aware of? And if not, why? Uh, that's one question I want to ask. Second, second one is, what advice do you have for young entrepreneurs out there on how to find funding, right? Because not everybody will be lucky like a funke to have an idea, have a silly idea, and cash a blank check for two hundred forty million dollars, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? You know that's that's an opportunity that not everybody mm -hmm. will have. So mm -hmm. how do we level that playing field for everybody else? Because that will be numerous funke in the world right now, uh, uh, all over the world. You know, it, it's not um, it's not just because she's funke. Uh, is because she has learned how to do things properly. Do you understand? There is no month, there is no week in this office that we don't get proposals for investment. That's what we do. Um, we are not a VC uh, company. We did not create it in that manner. The only money we use is what I call op uh, 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 own money. Not OPM. OPM is other people's money, right? So we we stake our our savings. We stake our what we have put together, and every time there is no year that we are not incubating a new business. Uh, I just asked a group of people to send me the account to wire some money into. Um, yeah, we're investing in, in a Bitcoin uh, 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 enterprise. You probably know them. Um, but they come, they come, and they don't need to know before they come. Even when we get letters, right, uh, somebody is explaining his business and so on and so forth, and he wants to further it with investment. Uh, if we find it interesting, we invite the person, okay? Uh, it's not all the time that we find it interesting, number one. Number two, if somebody writes, what is not properly presented, then we say to ourselves, this is not, we can't, we can't take this person from here. Um, uh, sometimes we visit a faith foundation and we see people who are trying to do things. But our own desire is not to um, take ideas from people and neglect them. No, that's not even our structure. The one that we we were able to create, we've since distanced ourselves uh, uh, from it. The idea is to capacitate a human being to build. You know, only, only corporations, only businesses employ. So the more that we build, the more people get employed. Uh, but it's not, be, but th those businesses must show signs that they will be profitable. You understand? Because profit is the blood that flows in the vein of a bit, well, maybe not profit, but you must be profitable uh, so that you can reinvest and grow. And hopefully you, the founder yourself, will um, one day walk away uh, because it has, give, it, it has um, taken a life okay. of its own and there are other things you want to do uh, uh, with your life. Wow, it's been an amazing time with you, sir. Uh, now for myself, let me ask some questions that I think you can help me with. <laughs> okay, go on. Um, if I, I can. Mean, <laughs> speaking for most fintech funders out there and other funders right now, it's um, regulation has actually been very. Um, there's been space for innovation, mm -hmm. even though the required frameworks are there. Mm -hmm. um, in my journey across Africa, trying to expand further, we've we've seen that Nigeria. If he has the most like, fintech friendly regulation, okay. um, which is amazing, right? Um, so, my question would be when GT Bank expanded out of Nigeria, yes. what informed that? And um, what advice do you have for young entrepreneurs who also want to build a global institution? Um, is it to expand first or to go deep first or to consider which one work for GT Bank? Okay. Let me answer in the in the um, order that you have asked them. What informed it? We're a Naira based organization. All right? 
and we felt that we needed to generate non-Naira income so as to uh, diversify our income base and also stabilize it. Uh, since for a long time now, the Naira has just been weakening and weakening and weakening. So when you say to yourself, on day one, um, you needed 20 million Naira to set up a bank. At that time, 20 million Naira maybe was um, divided by 20 or 30. That was the dollar quantum. Today, um, what you need to set up a bank is a lot more than that, but it hasn't left that dollar, uh, <laughs> that dollar base that we did 30 years ago. So we wanted to diversify and make income in other currencies so that if the Naira was weak, maybe those currencies would be strong and we can, we can, we can stabilize. Um, the other reason is that we were getting to um, a point here where we've covered so many things, uh, so many areas. So maybe we can expand our business by covering other areas. Uh, that I can, I can um, give to you. Now, the second leg of it was about regulation. Yeah. Um, the, only, the only advice I have for people is to first of all understand that regulation. Any, and if you do it well, you will do well. There's no, there's no other way. It might be slow, right? But if you do it well, you will do well. And for those who are not doing it well, they can have short-term advantage or advantages over you. But you know what? They are the ones that are going to hit the brick wall. And so many times when we're driving, we've seen somebody who just overtook us at speed that we don't think any human being should put themselves through. Yeah, they'll be in front of us. But in another five minutes, you just drive past and it's a wreckage. Of, a, of the same car that you are seeing here. So you ask yourself, why did he do it? And then you have um, gone past that um, organization. My, um, my suggestion to people who are setting up businesses is to be mindful of the role of capital. In an attempt to hold it all to ourselves, you understand, we don't want to bring in other people's money. Other people's money um, helps organizations uh, to grow, to breathe. Now, do you go deep in terms of your territorial expansion or do you, um, or, 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 I mean, or the alternative? My point is, number one, there are 200 million people here. When you take the West Coast of Africa, the West Africa, Nigeria is possibly 60-70% of that entire economy. How does somebody who hasn't even explored 70% base, right, um, begin to now diversify capital to be looking for things that you should look for after combing, only after combing this, this environment? Um, that's, that's number one. You can do it if you are looking towards diversifying your your yeah, currency. That 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 is possible. But don't overextend, don't overextend yourself in 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 those areas. And um, if you do it well here, and you prosper, you then be taking from reserves, right, money that you have made here, to go and invest in those places. And there's no delay. Any time you get there, you are stronger than the people who are there because you have come with, with, with strength. That's my, that's my guidance for uh, people going up and down. You don't need to get to Ghana before everybody or get to Kenya before everybody. What is most important is when I do get to Ghana, when I do get to Kenya, I'm going to be stronger than everybody. And if the strength is going to come from here, right, let me strengthen here. And be sure that, that those people who are in Ghana and who are in Kenya uh, don't even have the muscle to come and assail me in, the, in, in, in this space. That, that, that would be my own uh, counsel for, 
people in your space. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think I've covered all my notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. uh, thanks for um, your openness in all the questions. Do you have any questions for me, sir? Or anything you want to ask about? Why doing? did you agree with them that you should talk to me? <laughs> because um, I, I like that now we're having people like you telling your stories. It's inspiring for younger folks to learn from. You know, these days it's all about reading books of entrepreneurs in the US and the UK who are doing amazing things. But I'm like, hey, there's a GT Bank. If I've learned in intro today, you see GT Bank art in Terminal 3. I see it all the other time in a five. And you're wondering, okay, those guys are still alive and they are still thriving. Mm -hmm. And you've seen you've done it in different forms. You're back at that company and they've grown. So why can't we tell our story for people like us to learn from? That's why you agree. Okay. For me, so it's, an, it's a massive honor <laughs> to be here today. And yes, that's why I agreed. And yeah, thanks for that. Uh, one last thing I probably also ask is um, so what next for you, sir? Is it to, if you were to start it over again today, or how will you do it? If, let's well, say, no, you go back um, time. What next means that a person has finished <laughs> doing what they're True. doing, <laughs> and then they want to do. I haven't stopped. There are things, every, this is how I come to work every day, not just to show people that I have suits, <laughs> but, but it's a habit because I've come to work, and we continue to work. There are two things that we, we do. Those things that we've incubated that are not yet standing on their own right right have you seen the smith before the goldsmith or the silversmith you're constantly blowing the fire so that um you you maintain the same temperature and you drive them so that's been done um it's critical my my the rest of my life as most of the past is committed to um leaving this space better than I made this space, right? At least the bit of it that I can influence. I can't influence all of it. Nigeria is a big place. But Nigeria is a major place to me because it's a land of opportunity. It is where people like you, people like you, people like me, uh, can dare things, right? It's a struggle. It's probably the most difficult place to do business, right? Totally. But consistently, is the place that results the higher return, right? So, is he who dares uh, wins in Nigeria consistently? So, I still serve Nigeria. Just about a month ago, I got a letter from the Minister for Finance wanting me to come and help them look at things. And for me, maybe the greatest thing that I've done in my life is to reform the pension system, um, which now totals almost 10 trillion. Naira. At the time I did it, there was no cover there. Uh, and it's built in such a manner that it has withstood. Uh, it was 2004. This is 2020. That's 16 years. Wow. So we, we, I continue to do that and I'm open to that. I continue to invest. Um, now it's, uh, it's um, not for what I will feed on, but like you said, to capacitate people. Yes. Um, uh, and make capital to the extent that I can put my own little capital, make it available to do great things in, in, in their lives. So um, there is no next. And on, 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 on the world stage, I, I belong to the International Crisis Group. I'm a trustee um, to understand what is causing crisis in the world and to the extent possible, uh, join other thinkers to make presentation to countries and to peoples uh, to prevent crisis from occurring. Uh, I suppose the cost of uh, uh, fighting crisis is a lot higher than the cost of preventing uh, uh, crisis. But then uh, we still find ourselves in crisis despite the best, the best effort. And um, to the best of my knowledge, to keep asking myself regarding every issue, what is the right thing to do, right? And to have the courage to do that right thing because it's all, not always the case that those who don't do the right thing don't know the right thing. Yeah. Sometimes the right thing is very expensive to do, it's very difficult to do. But continue to say to yourself, that is what you will do. So that at some point in your life, 
I mean, even if the rules are bad, even if the environment is bad, live according to your own rules. Um, be the um, uh, the odd one, the odd one now. Live your conviction, uh, but you can do that only when you have the means to leave this world. And therefore, watch your overhead, even as a human being, you and your wife, make sure that you don't blow uh, up your overhead, because when income shrinks, right, are you able to collapse your overhead, or it's going to be there and then you start to suffer, and, 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 and so on and so forth. So it's, it's, been, um, it's been a decent life, it's been a good life, it's been a meaningful life, uh, and it just continues. Um, what next is whatever else is put on my. I have bosses like, uh, <laughs> like this who will force me to, to do. We've been at this for over a year, I guess. But okay, she won't give up. And uh, I can't push back anymore. Uh, that's, that's how we get this kind of thing done. So, what's your vision for your own company? So, at Father Wave, our goal is to make payments easy. We want to make it easy for a small business or a large enterprise in Lagos to be able to receive payments from their customer in Nairobi or even in Lagos or anywhere in the world. Um, I think that payment should be simpler than it is right now. Today, if you send money from Lagos to Accra, it goes from Lagos to New York, New York to Accra, and we want to make it simpler and faster and make it also uh, more efficient. That's it, sir. I, I wish you all the best on the journey. Um, if on that journey you feel that you need help, and we can be of help to you. And you, know, you, have, you have every liberty to come. Wow, my blank check. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of Journeys in Entrepreneurship. This interview was recorded on the 22nd of January 2020 at Mr. Fola Adiola's office in Lagos. We look forward to hearing about your feedback and aha moments in the comments section below. Remember to join the live conversations right after this premiere. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get further notifications when a new episode drops. And definitely join us next week Friday for a new episode. Thank you.